Hey, welcome back. If you like aviation content, smash that like button and we're gonna get into this. During the course of my training, there was not a more difficult maneuver for me than auto rotations. I seriously struggled with these. And as an instructor now, I see that my students typically struggle with one or two maneuvers as they are going through, but for me, it was auto rotations. And an auto rotation is what you would do in the event that your engine failed in a helicopter. A lot of people have the misconception that if the engine fails in a helicopter, the blades just stop and you just fall to your death. That's not true. The blades continue to spin and we can actually glide down and I actually think it's safer than airplanes. In a helicopter, you only need a small little area to plop the helicopter down. In a fixed wing or an airplane, you need a pretty decent amount of runway to land that airplane on. And as you're going through pilot training, you have to get proficient at this maneuver as it's important in the event that your engine does fail while you're flying. I'm gonna throw this picture up on the screen right now, but during what we call powered flight, which is just normal operation, the helicopter works by sucking air in through the rotor system and pushing it down, and that's how we produce lift. However, when the engine fails, we lower what's called the collective and we change how the airflow comes into the rotor system. And during the auto rotation, we actually have air coming up through the rotor system, which drives the blades. So this upflow of air through the rotor system actually allows us to produce enough lift to glide Obviously we can't go back upwards cause we need that upflow of air, but we can glide and it's very comfortable. So we're gonna jump into my computer and look at one of the flight videos. And this is actually when I had about 39 hours and this video humbles me because at this time I was really, 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 really struggling and we're gonna break it down. All right, so this was just on some random training day when me and my instructor were practicing auto rotations. I am in the right seat, he is in the left seat. And this first one I'm gonna show you and then we'll talk about about it. Helicopter 4 helicopter 708 Papa downward. Helicopter 78 Papa, north off uh, clear for the option, wind 3108. North off clear for the option, uh, 4078 Papa. Alrighty, auto rotation in 3, 2, 1. Watch that at it. Get back down to 60, all the way to 60. 69. Right there is about 60. Hold it. 60 knots, don't come out. 60 knots. 200 foot checks look good. Cool. Yeah. Go so do you see how we're climbing? Yeah. Cool, don't raise that collective. We don't need to raise the collective. We're trying to do a quick stop at the bottom. You've got to wait a little bit longer on that flare. Yep. I'm going to demonstrate one. All right, so watching that video gives me chills because I remember as I was going through this, I was struggling so hard. And you know, everything he says and that he's teaching is exactly what I say, you know, word for word, because what he's saying is what I need to do. And I remember in the moment, he would say one thing and it would literally go out the other ear. It's not that I didn't want to pay attention or I wasn't trying to learn, but there was so much going on. It was really intense and I just couldn't pick up what he was saying. But from that video, the overall sense I get from it is I just have no clue what's going on. The most important thing when you're doing an auto rotation is to maintain a level attitude as you descend. If your nose comes up or down or you roll a little bit, that's where problems happen. It's really that pitch change of the aircraft. And in that video, my nose comes up and my airspeed decreases and then I pitch down to fix it and I'm chasing to get that right airspeed. My rotor RPMs are fluctuating a lot and I just have no awareness of what the aircraft is doing. And honestly, the best advice and the best thing I can do as an instructor to help my students is just repetition. I'm gonna keep telling them what they need to do and helping them fix it, but we just have to keep doing it and they just have to keep seeing it and eventually they're gonna have that breakthrough. And that's what happened with me. I was not getting it for like two weeks. Every single day we would go out and for two weeks we were practicing it and then eventually I got it and it's all due to repetition. So the next one he's gonna demonstrate and we'll talk about that afterwards. Just say auto rotation, three, two, one. down, right, close. Small bump on this one, got our 60 knots. We're gonna lower a little bit, let those RPMs come up just for a second. Cool, 200 foot checks, looking good. At about 50 feet, right about here. We're gonna start a super gentle flare. Slowly progress, throttle comes on. Right here, I'm raising collective, left pedal. Really, really 
slowly. Man, it was a beautiful auto rotation he performed. And at my skill level at that time, I just thought that's unreal. I thought he was just a god and an aviation king and just I thought it was something I would never be able to propel myself to. And now as an instructor, when I do these 10, 15, 20 times a day, that auto rotation is just a classic good normal auto rotation and something I can perform super proficiently with no problems and I honestly feel like I can do it in my sleep now and that's just due to me practicing it every day for more than two years now. This was the biggest hurdle and when I found it this was like the key to success. Keep your eyes outside and maintain the helicopter at a level attitude. You know, in Hawaii, I was absolutely blessed with the fact that we have the ocean, so we always have a super clear horizon. So I can compare the nose of the aircraft versus that horizon. It should stay level throughout the entire auto rotation. However, if I see the nose is coming up versus the horizon, or below the horizon, I know there's problems. But if you're looking inside at the gauges, at the airspeed, or at the rotor RPM, you can't tell the attitude of the aircraft. And my entire problem through my auto rotation struggles was that my eyes were inside the aircraft. If you are struggling with auto rotations, keep your eyes outside. And this is the trick that worked for me. If you maintain a level attitude throughout the entire auto rotation, your airspeed won't change and your RPMs will not change. So if you focus on that level attitude throughout that auto rotation, your airspeed is not gonna change and your RPMs aren't gonna change and you don't need to look inside and worry about them. Everything will stay stable. Auto rotations are a crucial skill you have to master as a helicopter pilot. They're what's gonna save you and your passengers in the event that you do have an engine failure. The biggest thing that I harp on my students is keeping your eyes outside. And I learned this from this situation. This was me not that long ago. I struggled with this. But if you keep your eyes outside, you're gonna have a good auto rotation. All right, if you like this video, smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit that bell notification so you get notified every time I post a new video. And I'll see you guys on the next one.